Hey everyone, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for this uh, Saturday, just from a DFS perspective with respect to just who the best plays are. Again, you know, we we talk about this a lot, and there's an extremely huge difference between figuring out who the best plays are and then who to actually play when you want to, you know, take down that big, you know, 100K first prize or 200K first prize. Um, so we're going to break this down into two distinct videos. One we'll do today and the other one we'll do either tomorrow night or, or first thing Saturday morning. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to do probably a contrarian betting breakdown, which is, a uh, you know, just kind of a different type of fun. So this card started off at nine, uh, and they did add a bunch of, a bunch of fights and they even added another one at the last minute yesterday to make it a sort of full 12 fight card. Now, again, I listen, I'm not greedy, but you know, having 13, 14 would be, would be nice as well, but at least with a 12 fight card, you don't have to get too. I mean, you do have to get a little bit crazy, but you don't have to get that crazy to, you know, take down the big GPP. Um, maybe, maybe I'm underselling how hard that is. Um, 12 fights it is it is very difficult to get unique uh without without making some concessions and even with 12 it's I, I just i'm so spoiled that i was counting on it being 11 and when you have an 11 fight card then it's then it's only only and free then you're playing stuff that you'll never play uh but 12 fight cards at least you might play a couple of guys that you'd want to play <laughs> when it comes down to it but let's 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 talk about who those guys are let's talk about who the best plays are and again, we're looking for either finishing upside, we're looking for a takedown upside, and with any luck, we'll get some money line value as well. But let's just kind of get through it. I guess the first one we'll hand, first thing we'll handle is the one we don't know where it's going to actually play out um, as far as the fight order. And that's going to be the added fight between Evan Elder and Darius Flowers. Um, I don't know exactly why they added this, with the exception of they just wanted a, a 12th fight, which is uh, hey, good enough for me. And you have the biggest favorite on the board, that being Evan Elder at, you know, minus 410. And at minus 410, they're pricing him. Um, 9,400 is actually pretty reasonable for a, you know, for a minus 410, considering, considering that the next biggest favorite is what? Minus 200, maybe? Actually, no, Luana Santos went up to minus 400 also. Well, that's pretty crazy. Uh, we'll talk about that in, a little, in very, very quickly, actually. Um, let's take a look at the inside the distance line here. I presume it's pretty quick. Um, yeah, well, not really. Look, this elder inside is only plus 180. That's very, that is extremely surprising. I mean, for a minus 400 favorite, it should usually just be, it should usually just be higher. I mean, what's 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 his issue here? Because he got a decision in his last fight, I suppose. Um, he did get a takedown and a knockdown. Well, this is very rare. If I told you you were going to get a, a a knockdown and a takedown, you'd expect to get more than 84 points, but I guess it went to a decision. Um, and he didn't do too much with the with the takedown, only six seconds of control time. So based on this initial read. This this inside the distance line. Oh, wait a minute. It's elders minus 140. I don't know why I was looking at something else. Minus 125. So minus 125 inside. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. But it's not like a crushingly awesome line. You know, it's just kind of it's good. You know, you, you want to have maybe be minus 130, minus 140. So that's what you're getting. Um let's take a look at some of his other fights here, just as we're kind of going through this. KO, KO, has a sub. So he does get a bunch of finishes here. What's difficult for Darius Flowers is this is he's taking this fight on short notice and it's in Denver where the altitude is going to affect somebody's cardio anyway. So it's just a really, really difficult spot um, for Flowers. So I don't think I could be on the Flowers side. So we'll say Elder is a reasonable favorite. Hopefully there's favorites that are better and Flowers just... I don't think he's going to win this fight often enough, really. Um, so we're going to we're going to probably pass on him. 
I guess moving up the card, I guess, is um, one of several mid-range fights which are probably going to be worth keying here. So you have Josh Fremd versus Andre Prochowski. You have Fremd is 8,300 versus 7,900. And you do have a little bit of line value here in uh, Petrovsky because the line is now basically pick a minus 110. So Petrovsky does have a little bit of line value. Um, let's take a look at the inside the distance lines. I don't imagine them being that great, but let's just see. Uh, Petrovsky inside plus 225, totally reasonable. And friend inside plus maybe 155. I mean, plus Vig. Let's just say that friend inside is a little bit more likely than Petrovsky inside, but not by too much. I mean, considering the line value on Petrovsky, mm -hmm. I think these guys are probably pretty even plays. When it comes to takedown upside, I, mean, I don't know. Friends kind of lucked into a couple of takedowns against. Dumas. He has a couple of reversals on his record, which is which is interesting. And with Petrowski, uh, it depends which one you get. I mean, I've seen four, four, and then eight takedowns here. And then, well, he did get two takedowns and a knockdown against Mearshart. And he really never had much of a chance against Mal Ben Malcoon and Pohea. As a matter of fact, he did get a takedown against against Malcoon, which is pretty impressive, actually. So I think both these fighters are very viable. I can't really distinguish between the two of them as who the best plays are. I think you should probably play both of them. I'm not in the same lineup, but you should definitely have exposure to both of them. All right, the aforementioned Luana Santos versus Maria Agapova. Uh, she's minus 400 Santos, and, and the same price as Elder. Let's take a look at the inside the distance line here. Um... Santos inside is minus 130. That's very similar to Elder, you know? Um, so I, I really can't tell the difference, except for the fact that it's possible that Santos has more takedown upside. Um, Agapova does not have a lot of good takedown defense, and Santos does have a really good judo background. So I think she looks, you know, looks like just as good of a play as Elder. So we're just going to put her in. Um, Elder. Santos about equal. And Agapova, unfortunately, just doesn't win often enough. I mean, she's a plus 400 favorite. You, you need a really, really good reason to play these plus 400 favorites um, as being best plays. I mean, you could certainly play her in 150 max for the reasons that we'll talk about when we cover that. But uh, as far as like what good plays are, I mean, you just don't want to play. You typically just don't want to play plus 400 uh, underdogs. Uh, moving up the card, uh, Montel Jackson versus Demon Blackshear, sort of mid range, uh, eighty six hundred versus seventy six hundred. Take a look at the uh, line here, Montel minus one forty, so it's about reasonable. Not a lot of line value either way. As far as inside the distance line, you have Montel Jackson inside is only plus three forty. That's like extremely poor. Um. And even Blackshear inside is like plus 330. You know, for that poor of an inside the distance line, even for Blackshear, I kind of want a little better of a price than 7,600. The only thing I would say, though, is it is possible that both of these guys have some takedown upside. You know, Blackshear had four takedowns against Mario Batista in a very, very, very hard-fought loss. Let's put it that way. Then he had two takedowns against Johnson, followed by a first-round sub. Um, and then he has other takedowns here. I mean, he definitely has a lot of grappling upside. And when he grapples and gets it going, he can certainly score well. But even Montel Jackson has, has you know, I won't say grappling, but he's definitely a good wrestler. So if he gets the takedown going, takedowns going like maybe here, I mean, he scored 131 points in a win excuse me, in a, uh, in a in a decision. But that was also marked with, oh my God, four four knockdowns? I don't think I've ever seen four takedowns and four knockdowns in the same in the same fight. Um, I do think that that's, that's could be in the cards here uh, if you want to know the truth. Um, this guy's got a lot of power and I don't know. 
So I think that this fight is probably borderline. Uh, if anything, I mean, the metrics really don't lead us to playing either of these guys. So I guess we'll just leave it at that for now. Maybe, maybe Jackson at 8,600 is not too bad because of the possibility of those knockdowns and those, and those takedowns. So we'll, we'll leave him in for now. So Fatima Klein versus Jasmine Josevicius. So this one I think is going to be an extremely popular uh, underdog play. Uh, you have Klein, 8,400 versus 7,800. And I don't know how they got this one right for the short notice replacement. You got, well, they didn't get it right. This is the problem. So you have Joe Stavicius, who's actually now a favorite, actually more like minus 110 or whatever. So you're getting, number one, a pretty decent amount of line value in her. And in addition to that, I mean, she is a takedown machine. You know, um, you have his last four fights, it was two takedowns, two takedowns, one takedown against Miranda Maverick, okay? And eight minutes of control time, like up against the fence. Uh, and then against Fernandez, four takedowns and 12 minutes of control time. I mean, this is a, a huge amount of upside, um, regardless of what her inside the distance line is. So I do believe that she's going to be one of the most popular fighters on the slate. Let's look at some of the other metrics here. Klein inside is really poor. I'm not really, I don't really care too much about the Jazz the Vicious inside the distance line here. It's because of all that takedown upside. So as far as best plays, I mean, what, what more do you want? Uh, good line value. Her win condition is very, very conducive to DraftKings scoring. Very, very strong. Uh, Klein, just poor money line value. Bad inside the distance line. As far as just who the best plays are, she's definitely not one of them. All right. Um, Joshua Van versus Charles Johnson. I can't imagine this is going to be look good from a DFS perspective, just because they both are, they're both are, they both would prefer to be striking. So we have 8,700 versus 7,500 Joshua Van. Uh, Joshua Van is minus 200. You could even say there's a little bit of line value, I guess, in Joshua Van here, but let's take a look at the inside the distance lines. You have Van inside plus 350, though that's atrocious. Johnson plus whatever. I mean, this is just a poor DFS fight. There's no inside the distance. There's no inside the distance line to speak of. It's very unlikely that this is decided on the mat. So this fight is going to probably be a pass. Al Dul Harak Hassan versus Cody Brundage. I imagine this is going to, you know, rate to be a banger. You know, without even looking, I'm going to bet that. Al Razak Hassan, even though he's 8,500, has an inside the distance line of maybe, maybe plus 120 at the most. And even Brundage at 7,700, I imagine his inside the distance line is likely to be two, plus 200 or, or better. Let's take a look. I literally haven't looked at it yet. Let's see. All right. So first, Al Razak Hassan inside is plus, is minus 140. Yikes. Uh, and Brundage is, is what he said. So Al Abdul Rasak is a extremely elite play, um, given his price. Remember, we talked about these other fighters like Elder and Santos with minus one thirties inside the distance lines, and Al Abdul Rasak Hassan is 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 um is uh like seven hundred dollars cheaper with the same inside the distance line, extremely strong. And Cody Brundage with that inside the distance line at 7,700 is also very reasonable. So uh, along with Petrosky and Jaws Davicius, you know, these are, these are pretty strong looking underdogs here. All right, moving on. We have Jul Juliana Rosa versus Chris, uh, Christian Rodriguez, 8,900 versus 7,300. I wonder if they're going to make C Rod a minus 110 um, because of Arosa's chin. Let's take a look at this. C Rod inside the distance is 
no, not quite. Like plus plus one eighty or so, and that's like fair. That's kind of what I expect. Arosa inside, just atrocious. So Arosa is probably unplayable, and C Rod is very close to being a good play. Um, he's not as good as some of these other guys, though. He's certainly not as good as as Abdul Harak Hassan. I don't even think he's as good of a play as maybe the 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 trustier friend, you know. Um, anyway, C Rod just okay. Arosa definitely not. Gabriel Bonfim versus Ange Lusa, 9,300 versus 6,900. Let's see if uh, Bonfim can match this this elder or the uh, Santos. Uh, minus 300, good price, money line for him. Let's take a look at the inside the distance line. There it is. So Bonfim minus 150. This is what we're. This is what we need. Okay. So I regard Bonfim as right up there alongside of Elder. And Santos, as uh, and I guess you'd have to say that Bonfim is better than Elder because Elder's like plus 160 and Bonfim is inside the distance and Bonfim's like minus 160. So I think Bonfim is probably the best of these of these upper upper tier fighters here. Um, Lusa again just doesn't win often enough. And uh, the only thing I would say is Bonfim is going to be pretty popular. So uh, if you do play loose and you somehow get away with it, you're going to get a lot of leverage. But aside from that, Bonfim is obviously an extremely strong play. Drew Dober versus John Silva. This is going to be another mid-range uh, banger. I imagine you're going to want to play this one. Uh, 8,200 versus 8K. Um, let's see if there's any line value. I doubt it. Nope, it's basically a pick them there as well. And I presume they're both going to be about plus 200 inside. Let's take a look. Dober inside minus plus 170. Silva, like plus 130. So Silva is definitely the better play, having the better inside the distance line. But both these guys are very, very good plays at that price. We'll put Silva in for now. And when you when you talk about like plays like Silva and Jaws the Vicious, Al, you know, Razak Hassan, even Petrowski, you know, uh, this is the type of bill that's going to work, or it's going to look like it's going to work at least. Um, you play one, or you can even play two studs here maybe and get to these kind of mid-rangers. Uh, can't play Brundage and Al Razak Hassan, but look, for for example, you know, boom. It becomes pretty easy to, to do this, which means we're probably not going to be able to do it because it's going to be too chalk. But that's for another story. Um, all right, let's go back into it. We'll have Ponzinibbio versus uh, Muslim Salikov. Can't imagine this is going to be DFS viable. Let's take a look. Considering all the other great spots that we've identified here, uh, Ponzinibbio at 80, whatever, an 8,900 or something is inside the distance line. Probably not going to be good enough yet. It's plus 170. Just not great for his price. Salikov, just not good at all. His metric, so this fight's going to be a pass. And then we get to the main event. We have Rose Namajunas versus Tracy Cortez. Five round fight. So, you know, you do want to, um, you do have to respect that, you know. Um, the five rounds to work with does score quite a bit, but we have seen like a bunch of fights here with, you know, with, with real high scoring upside. So I don't think you need to play this main event if you want to know the truth, um, unless you really like it. You know? So we'll take a look. She's minus 200 on the board, 9,000, which seems about right. But I mean, she's got to beat some pretty high high possible high possible scores here and you look at her inside the distance line and that's not where she's going to get it done i think it's probably going to be it's going to be plus 200 let's see yeah plus 250 inside that's no good cortez doesn't even exist and and so you know the only way you're going to get there is if this, if if nami Yunus decides to go for a bunch of takedowns which she could or just gets a whole ton of volume inside of five rounds and uh, I don't know. I think I think this fight's probably a pass if you want to know the truth. So, uh, 
as far as kind of like the early look for the for the best plays, I think it's coming from this mid range. You know, you have Dober Silva either side of that. Silva's better play. You have Al Hassan and Brundage either side of that. Abdul Hassan is the better play. Jasmine Juice the Vicious, extremely strong underdog. Uh the Frem Petrowski fight looks good. And then you could just play any of those, any of those studs with Bonfim being the best. So from a who the best plays are perspective, very straightforward. But does that mean we're gonna actually end up playing them? Uh, maybe not. We'll have to go to that lineup construction video later tomorrow or Saturday to make that work. But until then, hope this at least gets you started and uh good luck.